This video will cover the topic, Inverse Functions, Rational. What is the inverse of a function? Good question. It is best to explain what an inverse of a function is with an example. Let's say that we have a function f of x. And let's say that hypothetically, if we were to substitute the x values of 1, 2, and 3 into the function for x, we will get out the values of 4, 5, and 6 respectively. The inverse function for f of x would be such that if we were to insert the x values of 4, 5, and 6 into it, it would output the values of 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Oh, okay, so what you're saying is that if a function inputs a certain x value and outputs a certain y value as a result, the inverse of this function would be such that if we inputted this y value into it, it would output the x value. That's exactly right. Now let's try out an example problem to see how we can determine the inverse of a function. Here, we are given a function f of x is equal to 7x minus 9 over x plus 8, and asked to find its inverse function. Once we have found the inverse function of f of x, we must then find the domain and range for this inverse function. How would we go about finding the inverse of this function? Let's first begin by setting the function equal to y instead of f of x, which won't make any difference in the long run. Recall that the inverse function will output the x values given the y values of the original function. This being so, we can take the original function and switch out the x variables for y and the y variable for x. Now that we have set up the function in this way, we must isolate the y variable to one side of the equation. To do this, we will first multiply both sides of the equation by y plus 8. Now that we have done so, we have xy plus 8x is equal to 7y minus 9. Next, we will subtract 7y from both sides of the equation to get xy plus 8x minus 7y is equal to negative 9. Now, we will subtract 8x from both sides of the equation so that we can have all the variables with y on one side of the equation. Doing so, we will get xy minus 7y is equal to negative 8x minus 9. Finally, we will be able to completely isolate y to one side of the equation by factoring out y out of xy minus 7y. Doing so, we will get y times x minus 7 is equal to negative 8x minus 9. We can then divide both sides of the equation by x minus 7 to get our final inverse function of y is equal to negative 8x minus 9 over x minus 7. Okay, that all seemed to make sense, but how would we go about finding the domain and range of this inverse function? Good question. We know that the domain of this inverse function could not include the x value of 7 because that would make the denominator equal to 0 but all other x values are accepted. This being so, the domain of this inverse function will be negative infinity to 7 in union with 7 to infinity. For the range of the inverse function, we must take a look at the original function. Since the x and y values of the function and the inverse function are swapped, the domain of the original function is the range of the inverse function. Looking at the original function, we see that the domain of this function cannot include the value of negative 8 because that would make the denominator equal to 0. So the domain of the original function is negative infinity to negative 8 in union with negative 8 to infinity. Okay, so then the range of this inverse function would be negative infinity to negative 8 in union with negative 8 to infinity, right? That's exactly right. Okay, I think I understand this now, but just to be sure, let me go over what I've learned. To find the inverse of a certain function, we swap the values of x and y in the original function and then solve for y. We can determine the domain of the inverse function by finding which values of x can be substituted into the inverse function without setting the denominator equal to zero. We can find the range of the inverse function by finding the domain of the original function. That all sounded right. You understand this topic so well. You should be the teacher.